Good morning from uh, Massachusetts. We're about to go on our way up to Acadia. It's around a five hour drive when you take these the uh, coastal route. So, and this is the vehicle that we have for the journey. Uh, RAV4 from New Jersey. We got it in Philadelphia. So, I'm gonna leave New England suburbia for the countryside. Eastern states, there's a lot of tolls. So, this is the main turnpike. Let's see it flashing. It takes me to this picture. But at least here you can pay with cash if you wanted to. A lot of other states don't do that up here. We're now going to take US Route 1 or the coastal route towards, well, the coast. And uh, we're going to stop in Brunswick for some food and probably yes. We're uh, walking in Bowdoin College, um, where my uncle used to go to school. Just as a quick, a quick stop, and then we're gonna try and find some food before we keep moving on. And they also have some more European style speed bumps where it goes up before the crosswalk and then goes down on the other side. Wish we had more of these other places instead of those annoying smaller ones. We stopped at McDonald's in Portland, Maine. I mean, not Portland, Brunswick, Maine. Uh, it's the kind of more urban part of Maine, but we decided not to stop in downtown because this is a little more convenient. So, we're going to continue towards the coast. Stopped here in Lincolnsville Beach. Quick stop to stretch before we get to Bar Harbor, where our hotel is. We got about an hour and fifteen left, I think. There's a ferry over there. I don't know where it goes. There's a ferry.
this was Agamont Park in Bar Harbor. Lots of people. Not sure what I was expecting of it, the sort of Acadia area, but it's definitely very pretty. And the water is very reflective. Having some fish and chips at the K's or whatever it's called. It's starting to get dark. It's in the 50s, which, while well, it's it's kind of, I don't know, cooler than other places we've been this trip. Less balmy, tropical weather. Doesn't feel like summer, is my point. But. It's a very comfortable temperature though, and I could see my breath earlier, which was kind of weird because I wouldn't think that you could see your breath when it's only 50 something degrees. Who knows? Good morning from Bar Harbor, Maine. We're gonna go into Acadia National Park now. Um, it's not particularly warm right now, it's 58 degrees. It's not cold either, but we're gonna go probably to the visitor center first. We have a reservation for Cadillac Summit Road at five. And then we also, and what else? I lost my train of thought. I'll figure it out later. We just stopped off at the visitor center and now we're driving on Paradise Hill Road up towards the Park Loop Road. And then we're gonna do that. And unlike other parks, you don't have to uh, stop at a booth at every entrance. So they, you could, you just stop off at one of the visitor centers, and then, or you can go online and print these, and you put it on your dash as you drive around the park. Part of the park loop road is uh, closed, so it's taking us on a detour. We just went by a golf course. Still a very scenic road, regardless of whether it's in the national park or not. Somebody's house over there. Here's one of the entrance stations. And obviously, some people don't pay attention because everybody's parked up along the side of the road. But there's like several parking lots with open parking spaces. But we're gonna walk along the path that's along this uh, Park Loop Road now. Very green. And I guess that is not a thing. 
U.S. government. I must admit that there are a lot of people here, so I'm used to it, but it's less crowded than Zion, but uh, it is still fairly crowded. But yeah, just keep that in mind if you're coming in the summer. We didn't bring our hiking shoes on this trip, unfortunately. So we'll have to make do with sneakers. It says, these groves of spruce and fir, granite ledges, and this magnificent window on the sea were given to the United States by John D. Rockefeller Jr. He was one of, among the first to sense the need to preserve America's natural beauty and to set high standards of environmental quality. This quiet, dedicated conservationist gave generously of his time, wisdom, and resources to help establish this park and others for the physical, cultural, and spiritual benefit of the American people. Planning a bit now, but lads the atmosphere of the area. It's also kind of refreshing, but also kind of cold because it's in the 50s right now. So not particularly warm. So now we're heading up this sort of path here along the road up to Sand Beach. Sand Beach. As the name suggests, there's lots of sand. It's actually kind of warm right now. Yeah. Uh, still, the water's too cold for swimming. So. But there's no lifeguard on duty, as according to the sign. So now we're heading towards the Beehive Trail, but. Basically what we're going to do is go up the first little section and then before the actual like crazy portion with the steep drop offs and the iron rungs that you have to climb, we're going to make a left and go over Gorham Mountain, that's what it said, and you can make a loop out of that back to where we were parked by Thunder Hole, so up there through the trees, I'm sure you can't see, is, is the, uh, what do you call it, um, that's where the beehive goes, it goes up the side, let's see if I can, I don't know if you can tell, but there's people all the way up there, and it's just, it's, it's steep, I'm sure it's a rewarding hike, but I also don't want to slip, it's kind of slippery right now, and I don't have good traction shoes either, so. So we're going to start going up this way. 
Easy. 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 If we wanted to, um, we could go up this trail here, the bull trail, and you can also go up the back side of the beehive that way, and you can also go to, um, there's a lake up there called the bull, but we also have a reservation at the Cadillac Summit Road at 5. And it's like two something now, so we figured we want to enjoy ourselves on the loop. So we're not we're just gonna go back towards the parking lot this way. So it's 0.5 miles this way, the actual Gora Mountain, and 0.8 kilometers. Just kind of scramble right here. Hey. And if you need any thing, if you need to figure out, like for wayfinding. Just look for the blue paint. It helps you follow the trail since there's no cairns around here. Well, this is a pretty good view too. Look at that. That's really nice looking. It's impressive. Elevation 525 feet or 163 meters. Which is what we call back home a hill. There's trees on all the sides. Coming into the more dense foresty stuff right here. The name of the island, Mount Desert Island, comes from the fact that it's named by Samuel de Champlain, a French guy who, uh, Helped settle some colonies up here. Um, he named it Ile de Mont des Arts or something like that. I don't know how to pronounce French, but that, I think that's how you pronounce it. But basically, it was referring to how the peak, the tip, all the peaks of the, all the mountains on this island are barren of trees because the peaks are virtually all like rock and stone so it it's hard for greed greed trees to grow through rock obviously so there aren't very many trees on top of all the mountains like Cadillac Mountain and the one we were just on Gorham Mountain also the beehive I just slipped there I should probably focus on walking and things talking. This uh, particular trail is not very uh, 
forgiving to the knees. It's probably a little more... I'd probably classify it somewhere, but it's not quite moderate, but it's not quite strenuous either. But, um, yeah. It's not too bad for me, but, um, yeah. It's, uh, very, there's a lot of slipperiness, and, uh, there's lots of rock, and it's definitely not flat. I mean, you are going up a mountain, so, with, like, over 500, uh, feet of elevation gain, so. My hair's going crazy with the humidity and the rain and stuff. It's uh, bizarre. Oh, it's a nice hiking temperature though. We've made it back to the vehicle. We've made it to the parking lot for Jordan Pond. Um, there's like a restaurant and a shop in here. And then there's the actual like pond over that way. So we'll go see that. Here's Jordan Pond. And right here's the restaurant adjacent to the Jordan Pond House. Apparently there used to be a railroad, I think this is a railroad, yeah, up to the top of the mountain, although I don't really know why you would really need to because there isn't really anything up there besides the view, but I guess even in the 18, well, was it 18? Yeah, 1800s, uh, there were tourists, so. but I guess this road was built in the 1920s and 30s. So we made it to the summit. Lots of people. And there is the loop drive where we were not that long ago. This is the highest mountain on the Atlantic coast of the United States.
There's a porcupine down here. Yeah, right there. It's going away. They scared it away. Going back down the mountain now. And the weather conditions are completely different from like 10, 15 minutes ago when we came up here. We're on one of the park's old carriage roads that you're not allowed to drive a vehicle on, like a motor vehicle, unless you're on a what is, unless you're a park ranger, obviously. But you can, I believe they have horses too, but you can uh, do uh, cycling and walking. So, it forms a whole network around the entire park. But I figured, this thing looks really cool, so I figured we could go and take a look at it. It's a 20 mile per hour limit for, speed limit for people who are biking, apparently. But this is an interesting looking house. I don't know what it's used for, I'm assuming it must have something to do with the carriages, like, the carriages that ran through, I don't know. I really don't know what that one I'm talking about. And now that we, uh, we came back to the room so I could charge this, and, uh, I, we went to have some pizza, or calzones. At Pat's Pizza over there, which is pretty good. Um, but now we're gonna go see the Bass Harbor Lighthouse, which is also a part of Acadia and is a very famous lighthouse.